today on Divorce Court. Ramon is a very controlling person. Uh, sometimes, you know, she'll wear things that are a little bit provocative. He would prefer me to just be in sweats and basketball shorts and a white tee all day or probably be in the house. I want to marry her. I just would like to address and um, work out these, these small kinks before we do so. With our struggle, I feel like a lot of it has fallen more on my shoulders than his. It's a bit frustrating. It, it stresses us out, you know, when you only have one person paying the bills. I've been broken down before to where I never really spoke up, and so I'm gaining my voice now at reason why we're here. I've taken this scenario all the way in my mind. Um, I have no doubt in my mind that this woman could be a, a good woman for me. This is someone I could spend the rest of my life. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Ashley Tuluxon and Ramon Gibson. The two of you have been together for eight months. You have no children together. You are here for one of my favorite things, which is before the vows. You love each other, you want to be together, but you have some issues you would like to resolve and determine whether or not you'd make a good couple. So I had you fill out my compatibility desk, which is a little bit deep. And uh, you also gave me your marriage license with permission to tear it up should I find that your union is ill-advised. I'm going to start with you, Ms. Tuluxin. I know you love him, but tell me what the concerns are. Well, my concerns are his controlling issues, his jealousy, um, his attitude, the way he reacts with our children, finances, the way he controls them, how he handles things. Is there anything you like about him? <laughs> Some examples of the things you think he does that are excessively controlling. My clothes. Okay. What's he, it do? He, do he doesn't like anything in my closet, not even my sweats, but won't replace them. So I don't know what I'm supposed to do about that. Um, when we go out in public, uh, as for instance, we went to. So this to you is inappropriate. I got I got something in the screen. You don't like her wearing something like that. I do feel it's a little inappropriate. Mm -hmm. Yes, Judge, I do. I don't wear those items mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah, uh -huh. I've made those adjustments for him. I, I dress down, I wear sweats, I wear jeans. I barely put on leggings. I don't wear halter tops. I don't do my stomach out anymore. Has that changed his attitude? Has he seen the changes and is now OK with how you dress? No, he still has an issue with the things Mr. that Gibson, I put on. Mr. Gibson, do you, do you notice that she's changed her manner of dress? I haven't noticed it as much. Um, you know, you've noticed some change. I've noticed some change, but it's I've not sufficient. It's not sufficient, I don't think, Your Honor. But I, you know, I understand that she feels like I'm, I'm controlling about it. You know, I just wish that she would be more mindful of some of the reactions that she gets when she does wear some of the things that she wears. And it's not that it's uh, inappropriate necessarily. It's just it causes me to have a staring contest with the gentleman on the next aisle. No, it doesn't. <laughs> No, done, done it all. That's his ego. Done it all. That yeah, that th that's your ego dealing with it. And you know what I mean? Very well could it, be. It, it's like a culture where you know, men are dogs, so women can't leave the house. You know what I mean? Right. It's exactly like, how so, it feels. So what, what what you have to do is behave better as men and leave women alone. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. And if, if, if a guy looks at her, he looks at her. You know, if, if, if your, your game is strong, she coming on with you. And, and, and that's the point that I try to make to him all the time. You say it, it, it's everything, makeup, hair, friends. Ex give me the whole panorama. Since I started my new job, I, I mean, I'm somebody who's always done my hair. Mm -hmm. It's in our relationship. I don't. I, I go towards the curly, natural look. I do love my hair straight, so I've been trying to find myself again as I feel uncomfortable. But he doesn't like your hair straight? He loves it straight, but he feels like I'm doing too much. If I get up for work in the morning, it's, why are you straightening your hair before you go to work? Why are you putting on eyeliner? Mmm, something's different today. Like, what? It, I mean, I can't dress up. I can't do, you, do, do what I normally do. Do you monitor her makeup application? <laughs> I wouldn't call it monitoring her makeup application. I'm just wondering why why she jazzes herself up so much to go and do something so casual. You know, what, this is not... What, what, what does she do for, for a living? Uh, she's an associate at a large retail store. Okay. And you think she puts on too much makeup for that? I believe it's a little much. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like she's going for a, a modeling gig. She's just going to, you know. Is it more than what she's got on now? Is this her usual look? No, ma'am. It's a little bit more 
jazzed up than this. More jazzed up than that. Yes, sir. She has. So, uh, she what was, do you think her I, her objective is? I think her objective is to uh, to receive some type of attention and in turn, you know, transmute it on the inside to make herself feel better about, you know, whatever. I guess. Do you think she has low self esteem? Yes. <laughs> Why? She she just feels like she has to tone. She feels like she can't doozy herself up. She can't jazz herself up because she feels that I may react a certain way, mm. and I may say that. Well, why? I may say that you're doing too much when we're only going grocery shopping yeah. or. Yeah. You Which know. has nothing to do with her self-esteem. It has everything to do with you. There is a theme here. I want you to grasp it as we continue. There are other things about which you find him controlling, including your friends. So I want to move on off of your looks and mm -hmm. on to other areas. Right. Are you as distressed as you indicated you were in this paperwork about the manner in which he tries to dictate everything you do? Yes, because for me, I've, I've been in those relationships where I've been broken down. And I don't want to go through that again. Mr. Gibson, your response to that? You say he's controlling with respect to your friends. Why don't you explain that to me? Um, I have a friend, and she, her job of choice isn't exactly something that I condone, and nobody else that I know would actually condone, so he doesn't, of course. But she, um... Well, now I got to know what the job of choice <laughs> is. <laughs> she's in the entertainment field. Uh, she's a, I'm in the she, entertainment she's field. A, <laughs> <laughs> she's a stripper. All right, she's a there stripper. you go, there you go. And, um, she's tried to change when it comes mm -hmm. to that and everything, and she needed my support for something. She was really down, and even though I didn't necessarily support the issue, I still helped her out because she's a friend of mine. She needed right. a ride somewhere. Right. And the attitude that I get from him is, as long as you don't do this, and I'm like, well, don't you trust me enough not to do this? Mm -hmm. You should know better than that. Mr. Gibson, your response to that? It's more than just entertainment. This is a friend that she's been friends with um, for a minute. Um, as far as the stripping is concerned, this particular incident she was talking about, she, the friend requested that she be dropped off at a stripper party. Mm -hmm. The friend had no other person there, and she had no ride back. So I'm assuming that my girl is the one to be picking so her up. So it was a safety concern on your part that... Absolutely. She and this woman was out there. What I want to talk about is, because I think this is really important, is the, the the disconnect that you have about the manner in which the children should be raised. Because I think that is, is very important when you're talking about whether or not you're going to get married. Right. Now, the kids that live in the house with you are hers. The one well, child, yes. One child is by a previous relationship. Do you have any together? No, ma'am, not Okay, together. so there's one child in the household. Currently, yes. Okay, yes. You have concerns about the way she parents. Why don't you explain that to me? Okay, well, recently, my, my son was in town from Florida. He's been here for the summer. Um, okay. He just recently went home. So the boys have been together. Mm -hmm. All right, now, of course, they're boys. They're, they, they play fight. They do all this. They play video games and stuff like that. Now, me. I'm, I'm used to my grandfather always saying, you know, stop all that running around my house, all the ruckus. Mm -hmm. So if they're in their horse plan, I may say, hey, you know, and I'm loud with it. Mm -hmm. Hey, stop all of that horse plan or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, go outside. And she, it may come off as abrasive to her. You know, my family is a military background. Right. I come from a military background. So as far as doing the homework at the dining room table, that's to, to leave you... Uh, to get rid of those influences in the room. You got video games in the room, mm -hmm. you got TV in the room. Get out. Yeah, yeah, just cut all that out. Yeah. Ms. Tuluxin, what do you see as the problem with the manner in which he engages with the children? It's, it's just the manner that he does it is forceful. Uh -huh. And it's, it, it scares the children from time to time. Like, you can see that they're, you know, they're You pulling... think it's too much for it's, the, it's for too the much. nature of the misconduct. Exactly. You're pressing for the ring, though, right? Yes. <laughs> Uh, I, yes, I am. You know, a ring don't help a controlling dude. I understand that. I completely understand that. But I... Sometimes they look at that marriage license like a bill of sale. Right. You my wife now. Uh, I see... The... Are you as distressed as you indicated you were in this paperwork about the manner in which he tries to dictate everything you do? Yes, because for me, I've, I've been in those relationships where I've been broken down, and I don't want to go through that again. I will not go through that again. So to see anything that might lead that way, I can't you do can't it. You can't have it. I can't do it. 
So it, it breaks me apart every time I see something coming at me, the attitude, the controlling, it's something I've been, I've been, I mean, mentally broken down before, and I won't do it again. Mr. Gibson, your response to that? Is, did, did you understand it to be her distress as intense as it is, and do you believe that she's simply misconstruing what you're doing or saying? I think she, um... I didn't know it was that intense. No, no, Your Honor. But she may misconstrue. But I'm, I'm, I'm really hearing her for the first time and knowing how intense it really is. And like I said, I've been self-evaluating, you know, just to try to tone that down. But, you know, I didn't know it was this deep, you know. So now I, I'm seeing, you know, okay. I don't like to see her hurt like that. You know, I, I don't intend to abuse her. It's never from a place of uh, mental abuse. You okay, know, that's not I got you. Style. I got you. I just wish guys would get educated about the female body for, for a couple of reasons. But uh, uh, um, <laughs> so you understand the nature of the badass work we do. And when you lose a baby, it is difficult to go through. So be educated before you tell somebody what to do when you don't even know what you're talking about. There was one other incident in my paperwork that concerned me. You talked about a miscarriage that you had and his response to that miscarriage. And I want you to tell me what you believe occurred. And then, Mr. Gibson, I will give, your, give you an opportunity to tell me what you were thinking and feeling. Um, when it first happened, he was very supportive about the first couple of days. And my pain just continued. But I never got a chance to take off from work. Mm -hmm. They made me come into work. And we, like I said, we worked together. So him wanting me to put on a strong front and be undivided as one and, and just be this superwoman that I wasn't at the moment, I felt like he was bashing me for not being able to stand tall while I was in pain. Well, what kind of things was he saying? that I was lollygagging, that I wasn't moving as fast as I could. He wanted me to be strong and get through it. He wanted me to be a warrior, and it was just his way of going about it and saying it. It didn't relay as that. It just felt like I didn't have the support that I needed. Mr. Gibson, why don't you tell me where you were coming from and, and what you were trying to do? Well, I mean, it, it, it hurt me, too, when, we had to, when I found out we had the miscarriage. I mean, I don't really know exactly what a woman goes through when she experiences something like that. You know, the only thing I can do is just go with the flow and, and just be there for her. After a couple of days, you know, I realized that it started to, it, it was taking a toll on her mentally. You know, she was becoming depressed mm -hmm. and, and things of that nature. So my bashing probably came off as me being that, that, that team player, um, that partner of hers to say, hey, come on, get up, let's still be strong. You know, we fell off the horse, let's, let's, let's keep on going. And like I said, that's part of my, my rigid. You fell off the horse. The horse ran over her. Oh. And let me tell you something that men don't seem to understand about the loss of a baby. It's not just an emotional thing. There are 9,000 hormones that go popping off when you get pregnant. And when you lose a baby, I, I, I just wish guys would get educated about the female body for, for a couple of reasons. But uh, uh, um, <laughs> so you understand the nature of, of of the badass work we do. And, and, and what it is is progesterone and oxytocin and all of those things, they accumulate. And when you lose that child, you have these massive hormonal fluctuations that go on for a period of time. And it's not because we just, it's like, she, you know, putting some heroin in your arm and said, buck up, don't get high. Buck up, <laughs> buck up, be a man. Right. You know what I mean? It is a serious and meaningful. She was creating a life and your entire body, the amount of blood volume changes, you know, everything changes. And when you lose a baby, all of that flushes out and it takes weeks and it is the most, it is, it is difficult to go through. So be educated before you tell somebody what to do when you don't even know what you're talking about. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Ms. T. Luxon, I'm glad you told me about that previous experience. I'm a little distressed that you changed your clothes for him because it appears to me 
that if you do that for a catch you are dating, that he's already begun to alter your mindset about what is appropriate and you'll change who you are to please him or to avoid an argument. And that's not all him. Some of that is you. I used to do that in my ass was like, oh, I'm married now. I can't get rid of him. So in, a, in order to avoid the argument, I'm going to do what he says, do what he says. And then one day I was doing what he said so often, I didn't like him no more. I mean, it wasn't his fault. It was my right. fault. So what I want you to do is take yourself, take a piece of yourself back. And, and, and when you take a piece of yourself back and he says, I don't like this friend, I don't like, so I understand that but I am a trustworthy woman. I've done nothing to make you not trust me. This is what I like to do, and I will continue to do so. You ain't got to get mad. You ain't got to crank your neck. You ain't got to do none of that. But you stand in your truth, and don't worry about the argument. Mr. Gibbs, I don't think you're a bad guy. I think you know you're a little rigid, and you would like to not be so rigid. And I want you to remember that, to be empathetic, is to understand that though you ne may not be thirsty, someone else may need a glass of water. So just because it doesn't feel that way to you, you have to inquire of a woman as to why she does what she does and feels the way she does. And even if it, you don't agree with it, you're gonna have to say, I love her enough to allow her to be an individual. And don't let your fear, and that's all jealousy is, other dudes looking at her and the clothes too tight, that's just your insecurity. Do not let your insecurity run your life. Just don't let it happen. Because if you let your insecurity run her life, you're gonna make her life smaller and smaller and smaller until one day she can't move no more and then she just ups and goes, okay? I will give you this license. I, I, I can't believe it. I was all ready to torch this sucker. <laughs> I was. I was. I'm gonna give you this license. But I, I want you to, do you hear and feel what I said? I do, I do. And I just want her to know, you know, that no matter what, I'm always going to come to you and try to communicate and try to get to the bottom of it because under no circumstances do I want to go to, go to bed mad with you. Yeah. But, but, but understand, it's not about winning the argument. It's about understanding where she's coming from right. and accepting that she may want to do something differently, and that's okay. Women? Yes. This matter is adjourned. Yes. yes, did you have something you wanted to say? I do. I love you. I don't want to lose you. I'm hearing what you've got to say. So, you know, let's work through this together. So, I just want to know if you'll, if you'll marry me. I want wedding pictures and a progress report on him. This matter is a joke. Thank you. You really helped me to see that, you know, I need to soften up a little bit and just be a little bit more sensitive to, to her needs and inquire about what she wants. Since the show, everything has been so much better. You know, we've been listening to each other, communicating a lot better. Yes. And the wedding is on the way. February, coming soon. February 6th, we've already started our planning, finalizing our guest list. Thank you so much for everything that you've done for us. Look for your invitation in the mail.